Now, this is one of the good parts. Now, it's funny how this movie starts. Now, I gotta tell you, I'll tell you right off the bat, you can, you can right off the bat, the vampire bat, uh, you can wait until you see this movie. You don't have to rush in to see it. It's not like Mario. It's not an event like Mario, and it's not like as great an event as D and D. D and D is more for the adults. That was an that was an event. I got free shit for that. But um, thanks to Cinepolis, and thank you to all of you being here. Um, hopefully, wasting some time with me. Now it starts out with a tribute to the universe. This is a universal movie, so therefore you're going to see. Uh, the Universal Studios Dracula, but not Bella. You're going to see um, Nicolas Cage in the role of the 1930s Dracula with Nick, Nicholas Holt. I remember Nicholas Cage has no H, and Nicholas Holt does have it. He has uh, two H's, one is first and then last name. So some people may forget that. But Nicholas Holt, uh, who was a uh, beast from X Men, uh, plays Renfield, the assistant. And he had a beautiful wife. And it was this great black and white, like, kind of uh, setup. Uh, I don't know. I think they inserted, like, the two actors into those 1930s kind of green screen effects. So when you're looking at it, you're looking at the origin of Renfield, because he is the title character after all. And he is, um, uh, he, he was a mortal, right? Like, the same backstory as Renfield from the original movie from 1934 or 33, and he uh, became immortal, I guess, through, I don't know, I don't, he's not, they didn't really say if he's a vampire, but that uh, Dracula's blood keeps him alive, and keeps him alive for the last, uh, well, they're trying to say 70, 80 years, but I mean, if he was a man of 80 years, then the movie would have been in 1980s or so, so... We know that's not true. The movie takes place in 2023 or 2022. Yet we're looking at, you know, 80 years as uh, yeah, one of the detectives finds out. So uh, we're looking at Nicolas Cage here in his immortal outfit. Um, I don't know if this is the beginning of the movie or not. Um, here you have, I do believe, I'm not sure what this one is. But I think this is a different, different movie altogether different versions of Renfield uh, throughout time and space. Now, that's the uh, the 30s logo, which was very cool. Um, here you got Nicolas Cage uh, preparing for his role. Um, and he's great. He starts out as this kind of ugly contraption of of horrible ma uh, Halloween masks and, and things of bugs and dead skin and all this shit. And as he feeds on people's uh, blood and bodies... He uh, starts to look less disgusting, and then finally, I mean, he, he kind of looks like uh, Olaf from uh, Shadow of the Vampire until finally he looks like Nicolas Cage with uh, blue makeup. And there are times where he looks like Christopher Lee, uh, Dracula, and Count Dooku. He's just got that that kind of a face, and it really works well. I mean, he's perfect for this. So the number one reason you want to go see this movie is because of Nicolas Cage. And I'd say Nicholas Holt really does well as sort of the anti-Dracula. He's an immortal. Um, when he eats bugs, though, when he consumes bugs, his eyes turn Sith orange, and then he starts, like, like breaking people into pieces. And uh, it's just it's just horrible. It's just, like, it's just like this grotesque way of fight. It's the, I call it blood foo, you know, like kung fu, but blood foo. And, uh, yeah, here he is here. And this is where, uh, I'm kind of spoiling as I go along, Nick, uh, Nicholas Holt is wearing that sweater to impress Aquafina. Now, Aquafina's cute. She really is cute uh, when she's not talking. But more importantly, I think that Nicholas Holt makes the scene work between the two of them. There are these awkward silences. They don't kiss, I don't think. Um, I don't even think they hold hands. But there is this kind of longing looking, longing and looking at each other. So that's a, in all the plot holes of how the police work and how uh, Vashalu, the, the, the um, sort of Iranian woman that uh, she's always, she's in the Expanse and Star Trek Beyond and 24 and all kinds of stuff. Oh, she was in, a, you know, she was also in an X-Men movie, X-Men 3 United. She played uh, 
a scientist. And so she plays this evil um, sort of mobster woman, but I don't even know what's going on in, in her headquarters or someone with a bandsaw in a, behind a curtain. It's very bizarre. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of B-movie plot going on. So I don't know if Universal Studios is going to plan another universe, but I think it should be dark comedy instead of just serious vampire. Like, Frankenstein could be uh, the brain taken from uh, Boris Karloff's Frankenstein and put into a new body, and then that new body is an actor we see all the time, but now he's the title role of Frankenstein or whatever. But, but all dark comedy. You know, there was one about a zombie boy who uh, had a girlfriend and stuff like that. And uh, so, I mean... And this one's the old classic Renfield. I think the problem is that so it starts out when we when we see uh, Renfield, he's at a uh, self help meeting. You know, uh, you are enough. Love yourself. You could do anything. It's like uh, getting away from your assistant, your master, who was a narcissist, and everybody has their problems. And it's in this lighting here, this greenish lighting. It's done like that on purpose. So that when you go into this meeting, it's creepy and green. And this one girl, this I think it's her name is Carol, and she she gets interrupted by Renfield. And but I don't think I, I don't think we see her at the end. I don't know if she got killed and forgotten. But um vampire blood seems to cure everybody. So if there's if vampire blood can cure everyone, there's no real death. I, I guess unless you chop up people. Which is what happens here. At the end, uh Dracula uh, Nicholas Cage uh, gets uh, chopped up into pieces. And what did I think of? I thought of fucking Simon's Quest. The NES game, Super Nintendo, uh, the Nintendo game, Simon's Quest, that was about finding Dracula's eye, his claw, his heart, uh, eye, heart. There were, oh, his cross? There were like five pieces of Dracula. So once you found all the five pieces of Dracula, and then Dracula came together, and then you fought him one last time. And uh, more of old Renfield. Now, I do believe this is this is the original uh, Renfield, but this they they redid all they reenacted all the poses. So Nicholas Holt would pose just like this, and it was bizarre. So so it's like they tried to like say this is the exact same. Dracula and Renfield from the 1930s uh, Universal movie. Um, I would say, you know, as much as... As much as Shadow of the Vampire, Nosferatu, is for the smart people, this one's for the dumb people. There's such a polar opposite. It's like, you watch you watch that movie with Willem Dafoe that Nicolas, Nicolas Cage produced, and it's very cerebral. I mean, it's very, it's very mental. It's like you can watch it and it's very old fashioned the way it's made, but then it's a new thing because it's, it has a, a new spin on things. But this movie is based on the 1930s uh, Universal Dracula and it's very right brain. It's, this is for the dumb people. Like you just want to like not even think about things. You just, it's the most, there's <laughs> right people. Yeah. So I don't know what Bela Lugosi would think of uh, Nicolas Cage. I think Bella would be like, I don't think I could get that insane. I don't think I could do these things. What is Nicolas Cage doing? Is he jumping around like a kangaroo? He looks like uh, Mickey Mouse and, uh, I don't know, some cartoon effect. What do they do with these computers these days? These these things called computers. <laughs> so, um, oh, there's, it's such a... so much here going on. I'm not sure if I'm able to show you anything related to, uh, here you go, the Red Band trailer. And there were some interesting Red Band trailers. Uh, one is about women behaving badly. There's so much swearing and insanity, 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 profanity, as I call it, because uh, the kids swear. And there's another one with, with Burke Kresher and Mark Hamill in another movie. That, that should be fun. Um, so I'm still giving it a 7.5 out of 10. There's not a whole lot to this. Aquafina plays a police officer, but she's really playing Aquafina. Uh, there are other cops in the department. It's kind of like take the cops in Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, and make it even worse. Because I would say I'd rather see Rosie Perez as the cop than 
Aquafina. Because Rosie Perez, well, she's Rosie Perez, but she could still kind of convince you she might be a cop. Whereas Aquafina is just Aquafina. And she was like playing a border patrol cop who stopped. Oh, but you know what? We forgot about someone else important. Uh, she was trying to stop Ben Schwartz. Now, if you remember Ben Schwartz, he was in uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, he was the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, and he's still the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. Ben Schwartz plays the uh, the opposite to Nicholas Hall. Okay, Nicholas Hall's going to self help meetings. He's a, he's been living for like ninety years more, so he's like one hundred and twenty years old and Dracula's centuries old. But Ben Schwartz plays this loudmouth uh, gangster with tattoos. And he dies at the end, I think, unless they brought him back and like, punished him badly. But, and I think his mom survives at the end of the movie. It's such a mess. So Ben Schwartz plays this thug who's, he's running with this cocaine, these cocaine bags and say, I need this, for, I got a prescription for all this, I need this. So he runs and it's like, I was thinking, gotta go fast. Boom, you know. So um, I thought that was hilarious. Um... Yeah, this, this story is centuries old. This story, whole story, is like, what if, what if Renfield was in modern times? And there were different actors who played Renfield, but this is a, this is sexy young heartthrob Renfield, who was in his thirties now, and or thirties go, going on forties, and uh, Ben Schwartz is probably one of the best comic relief. Now, some people found in the uh, I had there was an audience of about ten people or less, and people found Aquafina funny. I do not find her funny. I find Ben Schwartz funny because he's just so impulsive. He's like he's like that classic 80s villain that says, fuck, fuck, what the fuck, fuck, goddamn fuck. You know, he's just like excited, you know. Like swearing by itself isn't funny, but when somebody gets excited and yells, it's like like uh, like in Robocop where uh, the bad guy says, where's the fucking money, you know. And he's just getting all upset. That's kind of like Ben Schwartz's character. Now, he's a comedian, right? But he's just really good at what he's doing. So Ben Schwartz, um, Ben Schwartz, Nicholas Holt, the title character, of course, he really is. a. He, he does convince you that he wants to be this lovely gentleman. He's the straight, the quote unquote, the straight guy, you know, uh, he even tells Aquafina that, you know, he loves someone once. And so there's some nice scenes with Aquafina, but Aquafina is the least likable of the whole the whole thing. She kind of ruins the movie, but there she is. They put her in there. And I do like the scenes that Nicolas Cage has as Dracula with everyone, everyone, even the self-help group. He comes in, he comes into the self-help meeting. Okay. Got all these people in a, in a warehouse, right? In this green, this green lighting here, this type of lighting. And he just comes in with a top hat and that furry coat and a cane. Um, it's very bizarre. And they, I don't, these are all the original actor and not Nicholas Holt, but uh, him going insane and uh, oh my god! I wonder what he was thinking. What was he thinking? I wonder how Willem Dafoe didn't have to wear contra you know I don't have to wear a contraption like Willem Dafoe, but it's like it's bizarre stuff. And there, there the two are. So I guess we can end it on this. Um, Seven point five. Would I want to see another like a Frankenstein? Yeah, I mean if they can do it, I the plot holes are all over the fucking place. But I was entertained. The three main actors are Ben, Nicholas, and Nicholas. Uh, Aquafina doesn't do much for me. And that's it. I mean, there's a lot of quick, easy plot writing and stuff like that. Um, I forget the woman's name. Um, I might have her name. Let me say her name before we close out. Shore. Agda Shalu. Yeah, she was fantastic as the villain. She, you know, it's um amazing actress. Uh let's see. And Ben Schwartz as well. So these two were more of the supporting characters. She plays the mom, he plays the spoiled entitled son. And there wasn't much more, I think. It felt like an all-star cast. There were other actors, I think I saw a few couple more, but it felt like a really good all-star cast between her and yeah, Aquafina as well, but she was like the least liked. Um, her sister was, Dracula puts his sister, so how it ends is that Dracula and Renfield have a final fight and he's about to kill him, but because this whole thing is about a cocaine empire, 
uh, Aquafina takes the cocaine, puts a, puts it in a ring, makes a ring around it, and make and chants the uh, the uh, uh, cites an incant uh, an incantation. But we never see her do that. We never hear her do that. So it's just thrown in there as a plot, whatever. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was the magic plot to that. And that was it. That's how the movie ends with uh, Dracula in pieces and uh, Aquafina returning to uh, or going to the self help meeting with uh, Renfield. That's it. Seven point five. And um, I'll probably not be back at the movies for a while. Uh, there's nothing else really until the Flash. So stay tuned for that. And I'll buy. I'll probably pick this up on DVD at a good price.